Hey, what's up, guys? Last night, we had another chance to play Simon. Actually, I had a chance to play against you. And I just have to tell you that uh, in this short lecture, we're just going to do like more like review of the most interesting games. First of all, I'd like to congratulate the guys who made Ross. That's Gonzalo Mello. That's my student from Portugal, uh, Dionysius81. And the third guy who made the draw in completely winning position for him was Geopagus92. Guys, congratulations. I'd like to tell you one more thing. Very much being thankful for all the donators. There are four of them and you're going to be able to see their names here. And on top of all that, I just want to say that I had a great time. And once again, I would call you to become a member of the Butcher Team on Leeches. The name is The Butcher Team. So go there, uh, subscribe, because it's very important. Uh, because only if you're members of that team, you're going to be able to compete in, in simuls. Thanks to Theo Gentos for his uh, support, donations, uh, organizing tournaments, supporting these events. And that's the guy who's behind all these events. And thanks, Theo, so much for that. So let's go with uh, this uh, once again. If you're willing to take part in the next simul or to play some tournaments, just go on Lead Chess, become the member of the Butcher team, and that's what you have to do. Uh, so let's go. I'll show you one of my games from uh, last night. The game was played against Main Oncology uh, 2207. I guess that was the highest rated opponent in the uh, simul. I was white, I played my favorite e4, c5, knight c3, knight c6, and bishop b5, nothing else but butcher the Sicilian. The guy went with the knight e4, you know, they should always avoid bishop takes e6, and I played my favorite move, knight f3. After like knight f3, uh, he just went with knight takes b5, and I captured knight takes b5. For all of you who are wondering what was the final result of the simul, I won 16 games and made three draws. Luckily, I didn't lose any games. So after knight b5, this guy went with d6. You know that we always should break in the center and take by queen, not by knight. So after knight f6, castles, I'm willing to sack this pawn on e4. If they take, I'll be able to play rook e1 and to get like a huge, the very serious initiative. My opponent went with e6, knight c3, captured, and I recaptured. And I mean captured by queen on d4. That's the point of this system. Uh, inability uh, by black to ever uh, chase this queen away with the knight c6. That's a big thing. And that's why we're always willing to take, and we should be uh, taking by queen on d4. Uh, they have two options. They have an option of playing e6, in which case, if they go with e6, we play bishop g5. And white is tiny bit better with a long-term advantage. Or they can go e5, uh, in which case you have two options. The one that I gave in the course, Butcher the Sicilian with the queen d3. And the one that I came up afterwards with the queen before, that's an improvement over the course. So after queen d4, this guy played bishop g4. I played bishop g5 and I decided to open g file because I didn't see a concrete reason for breaking these um, pawns around the king. Actually, on the contrary, just like you're going to see in the game, I took advantage of the open g file and at the moment weak position of my king. And uh, thanks to this piece, I managed to win the game. So what happened there? After uh, I played like g takes f3, he played h6, and I was very happy to see this because I decided to capture and to play against my opponent with a bit uh, suspicious browser pawn structure. I anyways came with my bishop on g5 to take on f6, so uh, provocation by my opponent and forcing me to do so with h6 makes no sense. I played king h1 because I immediately want to find a um, better place for my rook on the open file, and that's why I played this, and my opponent went with e6. I went with that f4 idea, and whoever is familiar with um, uh, Rouser structure ideas, you guys know 
that we always should go with F5. And then in these circumstances, our knight is way better than bishop on G7. That's exactly what finalized uh, this game. He captured, I did capture, played castled, and I, I played castle and I played rook to G1. He can't move the queen because of queen F6. So he moved the king, which was pretty much expected, and I played knight to D5. I'm still not threatening anything that concrete, uh, but actually some uh, rook takes g7 now comes into scope. So he played rook e8. I could have gone with a uh, rook g7, but I decided to follow like uh, queen g4, lining up my pieces along the g file, threatening mate on g7. My opponent went with a rook g8. I played queen h5, threatening on f7 with tempo. He played queen d7. And for all of you who are just willing to finish this game immediately, uh, pause the video and find the tactics. I made a move and my opponent resigned. So, for all of you who said rip takes g7, congratulations, that's what I did. A very simple uh, combination. If he takes by rook knight f6 fork and I win the, I, I win the uh, queen, <laughs> if he takes by king, I'll play rook g1, king f8, queen h6, and when he plays king e8, knight f6, winning the queen again. It was a very nice game. Uh, and uh, all together with this game, I'd like to show you one more game that happened in this tournament and that have a very interesting, uh, very interesting happening. Um, so it was against Dionysus 81. It was, theoretically, it was a very nice game. And I have to be honest and to say that I, I was a little bit more lucky uh, to make draw there. Uh, so after e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, I decided to go for the scotch opening. Uh, so apart from drinking scotch whiskies, uh, I'm also playing scotch opening with white pieces, which is, which is supposed to be good. But sometimes it could be difficult if, you're, if your opponent knows what he's doing. Uh, Dionysius 81 certainly knew what was he doing this game. He played knight f6, which is one of the best lines for black. Another one is bishop c5. I took on c6 and uh, pushed my pawn up to e5. For all of you who are unfamiliar with an openings, this is absolutely the best line for uh, both, uh, I mean for white, uh, but also it's one of the most solid continuations for black. I played e5, my opponent played absolutely the best. Knight d5 is not supposed to be done without queen e7 because of early c4 and bishop d3, queen g4, short castle, and knight d2, knight f3, easy game for white. So he played queen e7, I played queen e2, and played now knight d5. Uh, whoever has some theoretical knowledge about this one, you should be familiar with this position. Now I want to go with c4 to kick this knight away. I did play c4, and he played uh, one of two moves in this position. Another move is knight b6. It's considered to be more solid, but bishop a6 is considered to be uh, way crazier, if you ask me, and sometimes even more difficult uh, to face with the white pieces. So I played b3. Uh, why? I'm over protecting c4, and I want to develop my bishop to b2 and support the pawn on e5. He went with long castles. I played bishop e2 and played queen g5. I couldn't find anything that special about this continuation by him. Probably g3 followed by bishop g2 was pretty much to the point, but I was afraid of bishop b4. So I played knight e2. He played knight f4 and I played queen f3. Uh, my reasoning behind this move was that I want to play at some point g3, h4, chase this queen away. But my opponent played bishop before. I realized that he wanted to take on d2 and uh, seriously uh, harass my king on e1. So I played long castle, which is nice. And he played bishop b7. Now I realized that I couldn't play g3 because of c5. And I just decided to check his pulse. So I played h4. He has to play here in order to keep, keep an eye on the knight on f4. I played a3 and he played c5. This is the move that confused me a lot because I thought it shouldn't be anything that special. I just went for a queen e3, bishop here, and I just said, let me just close and minimize the activity of the light square bishop and play f3. That's what I did. 
The guy played d5. Absolutely strongest move in this position that I have. I completely underestimated this one. And now, if I don't react somehow uh, accurately, I'm, I'm about to lose this game. Uh, the point of this move is if I take, that he'd be able to go with the rook h to e8, harassing my queen on e3 and getting like full uh, initiative and a compensation for the given pawn. That's why I decided not to take Ampassan, but to take the pawn, played queen b4, and my opponent played c5. I played queen a4, he played bishop c6, and I almost had my queen trapped. And this is the moment where he offered me a draw. I believe he was supposed to push a little bit more here because he's got a great compensation for the given pawn and I have quite a weak king on c1. All these things, I believe, that should give black pretty reasonable chances to play and push for a win. He didn't want to push for a win, but he offered me a draw, but I believe black is for sure a tiny bit better in a game like this because, yes, I'm up a pawn, but at the same time, I have lots of troubles and weaknesses in my game, including potentially weakest piece, and that's the king on c1. And let me just choose one more game uh, from the simul. Uh, let me just see something uh, from... Let's just, let's just go against Theo Gentos. Theo is uh, 1938, pretty good rating. He's improved a lot lately. Uh, Theo played uh, French opening. I decided to go with my favorite knight c3, and he decided to take on e4 and playing the Rubenstein line. I captured, he played knight e7, and I went with a tricky bishop to d3. Tricky bishop d3. Because I'm willing, if he plays knight g and f6, to go queen e2 and go with a famous trick. If he takes knight e4, bishop e4, knight f6, to go with bishop e7, followed by queen b5 check. He went for c5, which is absolutely the best move. I captured an f6, took on c5, and played bishop d2. Now, uh, after short castle, I was expecting long castle queen d5. Uh, that was main menu like 10 15 years ago in the games of Anand Morozovic and these guys uh, nowadays uh, it's not anymore uh, that popular for black because this variation is considered to be better for white they all went for a queen b6 but you know what i never care about that i just want to keep on developing my pieces so like uh, what could be like one of the crucial points of this game and lecture and how I actually try to play in simuls, mobilizing my pieces and playing fast. Don't care about the pawns, but I care about the activity of my piece. And that actually had a crucial thing in this game. He played bishop d7, I played knight f3, and jumped with my knight, creating a famous French knight. Famous French knight is knight on e5 against the pawns on e6, f7, g7, and h7. We have this knight in three kinds of openings in French, in Karkhan, and in some of Scandinavian positions. Very strong piece. And you'll see how did I take advantage of this knight, bishop on d3, queen, and how did I win this game thanks to these pieces. They went with a bishop b5, which is a reasonable thing. He just wants to exchange a light square bishop, that is the weakest piece in the French game. And he also wants to open the a-file and to come up with the attack. I played c4, kicking that bishop away, and since g2 isn't hanging in that classical fashion, but I anyways have problems with the rook on h1, I decided to play f4, move my rook from h1, and to play g4. That's exactly what I did. I first put my king on b1, played rook f1, and I decided to go with g4. It's a famous idea. For all of you who are wondering, does rook to d3 work here? No, it doesn't, because of the knight takes d3. He played bishop d4, threatening mate on p2, and I played bishop c1. Nothing hyper solid development. I don't see any weaknesses in my game. And here I just have to be on top of my attacking task. He went for a4. I played g5. Kicking this knight away is one of the crucial things with a French knight and in French positions. He took on e5. I recaptured and played knight d7. Once again, pause the video and find the combination thanks to which I finish him in four moves.
for all of you who said bishop takes h7 congratulations uh queen h5 queen f7 and famous rook lifting why here why not to d3 so he can go with bishop e4 going with the check and covering on h7 he went with the knight f8 i played rook h4 and thea resigned because the mate was unstoppable thanks so much for watching subscribe on the channel uh bring up some donations also subscribe on the lead chess become a members of the butcher team and start playing simuls and in the butcher tournaments thank you so much and have a nice time and have fun bye bye